Today I'm going to take you through the process of creating this World War II aircraft nose art inspired image, featuring the classic girl riding a bomb style pinup. Traditionally this style of artwork was hand painted on bombers to boost morale and to bring good luck to the planes, perhaps the most well known being the B-17 Memphis Belle. These days it's an iconic art style that can still be found on custom trucks or hot rod door panels, on the back of motorcycle jackets or vintage style posters and signs. Rather than painting the artwork by hand on the fuselage of a plane, we'll be making use of a handful of stock images to digitally compose the layout. A series of Photoshop filters and effects will give the lifelike photographs a painted appearance, then the whole design will be placed on a riveted metal surface and processed so the texture gives it a weathered appearance of an old bomber plane's decorative nose art. I recently signed up to Adobe Stock, so that's where you can find all the assets I used in today's tutorial. You can get your first 10 images free by following the link in the description. The first image we'll be working with is named Salute Pinup. It has a relatively clean background so it isn't too hard to cut out. Go to Select and Subject to let Photoshop do as much of the job itself. Then go to Select and Select and Mask to refine the selection. Zoom in and check for any mistakes. Correct them by painting to add more areas to the selection or hold Alt while painting to remove areas from the selection. The mask is highlighted in red by default which is quite hard to see against a pink background. Change the colour to something vivid, which also stops the model looking like she has severe sunburn. Now she just looks like the Wicked Witch of the West. Copy and paste this selection to save the clipped version on a new layer. Switch over to the bomb image. Go to Image, Image Rotation and flip canvas horizontally. Use the Crop tool to expand the canvas area to provide more space to build the composition. Go to Select and Subject then fix any remaining areas with the quick selection tool. Go to select and inverse then hit delete to remove the white background. Go back to select and then deselect to remove the selection. Give the bomb more of an iconic green colour by going to image adjustments and hue and saturation. Check colorize then configure the values to 100, 25 and minus 45. Use the Command and T shortcut or Ctrl and T on Windows for transform, then rotate the bomb in a downwards direction. Switch back to the model image and go to Select and All, followed by Edit and Copy. In the bomb image document, go to Edit and Paste. Use Command and T to scale, position and rotate the model so it appears as if she's sitting on the bomb. Add a new layer above the bomb but below the model in the layer stack. Activate the brush tool and set up a soft tip with a low flow value. Paint in a rough shadow underneath the model, it doesn't have to be too perfect or realistic. Hold the command key or control key on windows and click the thumbnail of the bomb layer to load its selection. Inverse this selection then hit delete to remove any of the shadow beyond the outline of the bomb shape. Use the command and D shortcut as a quicker way to deselect. Set this layer to soft light to allow the black shadow to interact with the colours of the bomb. Shift and click all the layers, then use the Command and G shortcut for Group. Give the group the name Original to keep a backup copy. Go to Layer and Merge Visible, but hold the Alt key while clicking to create a merged copy on a new layer. Give this layer the name Diffuse. Now in a previous retro pinup effect tutorial, I made use of the oil paint filter among other filters from the filter gallery, but today I'll show you a different concoction of filters that produces the same but different effect. Go to Filter, Stylize and Diffuse. Choose Anistrophic. This filter smooths out the details of the image, but we need to apply it in all different directions to maximise the effect. Go to Image, Image Rotation and 90 degrees clockwise. The most recent effect applied is conveniently placed at the top of the filter menu. Run it again. Rotate by another 90 degrees, then add the diffuse filter again. Then a final time before rotating the image back to the correct orientation. The fully diffused image looks nice and smooth with a similar appearance to the oil paint filter. Make a duplicate of this layer by dragging it onto the new layer icon. Give it the name Painted Effect. Right click and choose Convert to Smart Object, so the settings of the following filters can be adjusted if necessary. 
go to filter, blur and surface blur, enter values of 30 and 10. Next open the filter gallery, configure the dry brush effect from under the artistic category to 0, 10 and 1. At the bottom of the filter gallery panel, click the icon to add a new effect, choose crosshatch from the brush strokes section. Configure these settings to 9, 5 and 1. The combination of these two filters gives the image a hand painted look. OK these settings to save them as one smart filter. Then go to filter and filter gallery again to configure a new effect. Delete the crosshatch effect from the stack so there's just one effect being applied. Then change dry brush to poster edges from the artistic category. Set all the values to zero. Click the little icon next to this latest smart filter to edit its blending options. Change the mode to overlay to allow the blocky shapes to interact with the colours of the subject. Then reduce the opacity to around 60%. Drag the painted effect smart object onto the new layer icon to duplicate it. Edit its name to equalise. Right click the smart filters and clear all the existing effects. Go to image adjustments and hue and saturation. Decrease the saturation to minus 100 to turn this image to black and white. Next invert the image under image adjustments and invert. Finally add a filter, blur and gaussian blur with a radius of 10 pixels. Set this layer's blending mode to overlay to allow the tones to even out the colours and contrast of the original image underneath. The blur effect causes a bit of a shadow around the outline, so hold the command key and click the thumbnail of the original layer to load its selection. Apply a layer mask to effectively erase the excess around the edge. This equalisation layer really helps to flatten out the image into larger blocks of colour, rather than the depth of shadows and highlights of the original photograph. Let's finish off the pinup composition with some text. Type out the name of your bomber. I'm going with Lady Luck using a nice script font named Corner Store from the Adobe Fonts Library. Follow the link in the description to activate it. Set each word in its own text layer to make it easier to make a creative layout. Right click while using the transform command to skew the text upwards into a rise effect, then group the layers together. Double click the group to apply a drop shadow layer style to both text objects at the same time. Reset the values, then colour sample a hue from somewhere on the image. Set the spread to max, size to zero, and alter the distance figure to create a solid shadow effect. Go to select an all, then edit and copy merged to take a snapshot of all visible layers. Open up the old green metal surface of an aircraft image. This stock image is pretty huge at over 8000 pixels, so open up the image size window and bring it down to a more manageable 3000 pixel width. Let's reduce the saturation slightly with a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Bring down the saturation to around minus 30. Paste in the pinup composition. Then use the command and T shortcut to scale and position it onto the fuselage. Set the blending mode to hard light to allow the features of the texture to show through. This blending mode alone helps to make the image look like it has been applied to the surface, but let's make use of some of that texturing to further blend the two layers. Turn off the visibility of the pinup layer for a moment, then switch to the channels panel. Find the channel with the highest contrast, which is usually the blue channel. Drag it over the new channel icon. Use the command and L or control and L shortcut on Windows to open the levels. Move the sliders around to dramatically boost the contrast, so the darker areas are black and the highlights are bright white. Hold the command key and click the channel thumbnail to load its selection. Then activate the RGB channel again to bring back the normal view. Back in the layers panel, make the pinup layer visible again and add a layer mask. The mask will be automatically applied according to the selection, which results in the textured portion of the image being erased from the pinup layer. Use the command and I shortcut to prevent the majority of the image being erased. Then use the levels again to adjust the appearance further. The brighter the highlights, the more of the pinup will be visible. The darker the shadows, the more the texture will erase the layer. Applying the texture really helps to boost the realism of the composition by making it look like the painted mural has been worn away exactly where the metal surface has rust and scratches. The final result is a creative vintage pinup effect inspired by the nose art of World War II bombers. By using stock images we've composed our own girl riding a bomb pose, 
Then a selection of Photoshop filters helped give it a hand-painted look by reducing the photograph details into flat blocks of colour. Finally, combining the image with an aircraft fuselage and applying the textures really finishes off the artwork as a realistic nose art painting that has been weathered and worn over generations. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.